All right, good morning, everyone. Let's call our meeting to order this Tuesday, April 16th at 9.30 this morning. Erica, can we start with a roll call? Commissioner Henry. Here. Commissioner Tedesco. Here. Commissioner Pinter. Here. Commissioner Odoricio. Here. Commissioner Baca. Here. And I would invite you all to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have a motion this morning to approve our agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. That passes unanimously. We do have quite a lot of celebrations this morning. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, we will start with our employees of the season. And we have um, a script to make sure that we honor each employee correctly. So we're beginning today's hearing by honoring the winners of the county's employee and team of the season awards for the winter 2024 season. These employees have, uh, have all gone above and beyond to demonstrate outstanding service and dedication to the county and its residents. We'll first announce the team of the season winner, followed by the employee of the season category winners, and finish with introducing the overall employee of the season winner, and then gather for a group photo at the end of all the announcements. The winner and their supervisors are here with us and will have a chance to speak after we have read their nominations. And I believe the first award is Commissioner Henry. Thank you, Chair. We begin with our Team of the Season Award, and we're joined this morning by District Attorney Brian Mason and the DIA Motor Vehicle Theft Prosecution Team. Would you please all come down to the podium while I announce your award? Are you all here? No. Brian's not here. No big deal. I'm sure somebody's here. Okay. Different, different lawyer, lawyer or an attorney. The team of the season award recognizes project teams and work groups who have successfully collaborated outside their normal routine work duties to accomplish a significant goal. The posit positively impacted the workplace of the Adams County community. Tony Weeman nominated the prosecution team with this submission. This team helped secure 121 counts grand jury 121 let's see this submission this team helped secure 121 grand jury 121 count indictment charging 13 individuals with various crimes related to stolen vehicles to include second degree burglary aggravated motor vehicle theft and theft these individuals were involved with the theft of vehicles, mainly from a parking lots at Inter Denver International Airport, and then using those vehicles in the burglary of businesses both in Adams County and throughout the metro area. They would use vehicles to smash through the front doors of businesses and then pull out ATMs. The investigation and grand jury process was extremely large and complex with suspects in Colorado, other states, and Mexico. Our office is very proud of the hard work by this team to bring this indictment of Adams County District Court. They will also handle all subsequent okay, prosecution on these defendants are found and arrested for these crimes. This indictment will serve as a warning to other motor vehicle theft rings that all efforts will be made to end their criminal enterprises and pr protect Adams County residents and DEIA visitors. And I would say, who's here to talk? <laughs> Would you and anyone from the prosecution team like to say a few words?
great. Thank you. What an amazing team. Yes, sir. Now Mr. We Tedesco. Will... Oh, so sorry. We just have a, a comment, I believe. I, I do have a comment. I just want to tell the team that worked on this, you know, although we're recognizing you here today, um, I want you to know how much you've been recognized across the state um, at the Capitol in huh? talking to some of our legislators and senators. They are absolutely amazed at the drop in auto theft at DIA. A few of them have been victims of the theft out at DIA. DIA. Um, also in E-470, um, it was a topic of discussion during one of our latest meetings about the incredible work that you guys did and how many arrests you were able to make and the difference you made out at DIA. Um, I, I just got to tell you, you know, your recognition goes way beyond uh, here in Adams County and people are talking about this work that you're doing and I just wanted you to know that. Great. All right, now we will introduce our employee of the season category, Commissioner Tedesco. Good morning. The first employee of the season award today, I think I'm on the right one, uh, is for making it happen category, which honors employees who achieve the desired outcome despite facing adversity, such as lack of resources, unexpected challenges, etc. We have Jason Schultz, Deputy Director of Information Technology and Innovation, here along with Donald Meisen, Meisenheimer, Zach Vamash, uh, nominated Donald by this employee, by writing this employee is one you'll rarely find at his desk. That's because he's probably at yours or one of your coworkers. He is undoubtedly one of the hardest working members of the desktop support team, if not the entire county. His job takes him to every Adams County building and whatever building he's at, he's the king of the, hey, while you're here, would you mind? Uh, extras. That See, I had to switch pages, so there's a long dramatic pause there. Uh, that may not be the rarest thing to see around here, but he does every bit of it with a smile that accompanies his unwavering can-do, will-do attitude. Jason, Donald, want to come forward and say a few words? Hey, by the way, while you're here. I have some issues. <laughs> Same. We all have issues. <laughs> That's pretty much it, too. Uh, thank you, uh, commissioners, for uh, this opportunity to really recognize Donnie and really just supporting the entire Adams County family through our uh, employee recognition program. I'm Jason Schultz. I'm the interim director of ITI. Um, just a few words about uh, Donnie. He's been with the county almost eight years. Uh, he started out in the help desk. He advanced through all our different uh, tiers and then was promoted to desktop support team a few years ago. Um, I know you know he's a familiar face in here. He helps get all the computers set up for every public hearing. I think he's only missed a couple holidays. Um, but so we're grateful to have him here every Tuesday. Um, and we're really fortunate to have him on our team and specifically within um, ITI. Uh, one sentiment that is echoed throughout whenever I talk about Donnie is that he genuinely cares. And I would add that he genuinely cares about people. It's not just about the technology, but to Donnie, it really is to care about the people. Um, he's invested in everyone's success. He's always willing to go above and beyond. And if for some reason he can't immediately help during those while you're here instances, um, he's a strong advocate for our customers. He utilizes all the resources he can muster to get the issues resolved quickly and definitively. He approaches his work with heart, commitment, curiosity, and dedication, and he builds strong relationships with everyone he works with. That's customers, staff, um, on all, basically all members of the Adams County community. Um, when I look at our cultural norms, I think Donnie truly exemplifies what it means to be positive in all circumstances, to be optimistic for success, to treat everyone with kindness and dignity, and to always demonstrate consistent and unbiased treatment to everyone in Adams County. So thank you, Donnie. Uh, this recognition is very well deserved and we're honored to celebrate uh, your success with you. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you very much for this opportunity and the recognition, of course. Um, 
I would like to thank, of course, uh, Zach uh, Vemosh for his inspiring nomination and uh, Shelley Lubick and her team for my selection in the Making It Happen category. Uh, it is an honor to be recognized, especially by my peers. I appreciate this moment as it affords me an opportunity to express my own gratitude. Uh, gratitude for those that have been there to guide me, uh, those that have supported and encouraged, encouraged me on my own journey. As I reflect on that journey, I am reminded of a quote, and please forgive me as I might be paraphrasing, uh, you are judged by the company you keep. While I stand at this podium, I am fully aware that the credit is not mine alone. My colleagues in the Information Technology and Innovation Department who have contributed so much to our team, fellow Adams County departments, and the county as a whole have my serest thanks. Sorry, sincerest thanks. Uh, if it wasn't for their continued efforts, opportunities like this would be an even rarer occasion. Uh, they are an amazing group of people uh, whom I have come to love and appreciate for all that they offer. I can always depend on and trust them in times of need. If I am truly judged by the company I keep, I'm good. I would also like to thank my family, uh, my mother and father for their encouragement in raising me on the values of integrity, ethics, and generosity. Lessons that have shaped my character for the better, no matter how many times I proceeded to challenge them in my adolescence. My children, uh, who have stood by me and witnessed the lessons of sacrifice and perseverance, otherwise known as money doesn't grow on trees. And finally, my wife, my rock, who on many of my late work nights and weekends exemplified that patience is a virtue. I couldn't ask for a better partner. She absolutely defines our cultural norm of support and encourage. In closing, I would like to also thank the other county departments for their hard work in maintaining our community inside and outside of these walls. There are countless opportunities where our teams are making it happen, from the backbone of fleet and facilities to the human services teams that provide endless hours of support for our Adams County families. I appreciate everything you do and look forward to seeing more and more of you up here in the future. Thank you. That's awesome. The next award is for the success in practice category, which honors individuals who play an integral role in the successful intervention, problem resolution, and improvement with a customer, a resident, or simply processes of the county. We welcome Director of Human Services, Katie McDougall, to the podium along with Shondell Algwin. And Shondell has received this nom nomination from Farron Lee, Cheyenne Alfin, and Gretchen Witkowski. Gretchen Witkowski Bush. And they state, quote, Shondell has been an amazing, has been the most amazing supervisor. She is always more than willing to help in any capacity she can. She goes above and beyond in her job and is always has, she always has the backs of her team. She made us feel welcomed, understood, and genuinely appreciated. She does not seek or re request recognition and she does not and she does this what she does what she needs to do to help we couldn't be more thankful to have such supportive kind caring and excellent supervisor she embodies everything that adams county strives to be katie and that do we have is this not shondell this is not shondell okay. uh, which right. i will explain in a moment but good morning commissioners thank you so much for uh taking the time to recognize shondell uh, shondell has been with our county for 25 years unfortunately she's unable uh to be with us today because she's caring for a, kick, a sick child uh and if you uh, are to meet shondell you will hear how proud she is and how joyful she is about her family she loves to brag about them all of the time um, she currently uh, supervises one of our processing teams um, who processes Medicaid and SNAP for our community. And as we've discussed, there's just such a high need. And so to hear how supportive of she is of her team and how meaningful that is with so much going on, I'm extremely grateful for her leadership and the support of her team. 
um, she has also stepped into like figure out well, how do we do this better and how do we do this different. So she often volunteers to look at uh, new processes and to test those new processes and to work with our team to hear the feedback on that. So thank you for uh, recognizing Chandel and her supervisor Jeremy is here to accept the award and say a few words as well. Good morning, commissioners. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for this honor for Shondell. Um, Shondell is probably one of what I consider my unsung heroes. Um, I've known Shondell for four years and had the pleasure of working alongside her. Um, she is one of our adult financial experts. And so she is definitely seen throughout the state as an expert as it relates to that program. And as you know, those are some of our highest need individuals. Those that are coming in for our old our old age pension and our aid to needy and disabled. Um, she oftentimes takes cases that come in as escalations, processes them quickly, and gets a resolution to our citizens in order to get their benefits. Um, hearing this award, I was not surprised. Shondell oftentimes has embodied that support and encourage with her team. Um, she has a great relationship with them. I see them coming in and going from her office whenever she's there, um, whether she's helping them with personal issues or work issues as well. Um, so again, just wanted to take this minute to thank you. I know that she wishes that she could be here this morning um, and apologize that she wasn't able to, but she sends her thanks through me and she is very honored in this reward award. Good morning. Our next category is the Unsung Hero, <clears throat> and it honors individuals for providing high quality, reliable, and critical work that if not completed would compromise operations. This person functions behind the scenes, is willing to improve work situations, and does so without fanfare or being prompted. Please welcome to the podium Colorado Air and Spaceport Deputy Director William Flowers to the podium along with Nathaniel Scobie, making their way up. So Nathaniel was nominated by Doug Fisher, who wrote, quote, Nathaniel's unwavering dedication, upbeat attitude, and willingness to go above and beyond make him an invaluable member of our team. Nathaniel's positivity is contagious, brightening even the dreariest of days. His infectious smile and upbeat demeanor create a working atmosphere so delightful that even Garfield would find joy in a Monday. <laughs> One of Nathaniel's most admirable qualities is his determination to get the job done. He approaches every task with diligence and commitment, ensuring that nothing falls through the cracks. Nathaniel consistently goes above and beyond to make a positive impact on our team and deserves recognition for his outstanding contributions. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Commissioners. I'm William Flowers, Deputy Director of Colorado Air and Spaceport. Um, we are delighted to have Nathaniel recognized and um, winning this award. He's been with us for about a year. He's a hard worker, always poised at work, um, you know, working in aviation, let alone FBO business. Um, the job could be hard, a lot of long hours, and he is definitely one of the um, highlight uh, success stories that we actually have at the Colorado Air and, Space, Air and Spaceport since Jeff and I have now become de director and deputy director. But um, needless to say, um, he is, you know, an excellent person to have on our team. Everybody loves him. Um, he is one of the uh, backbones, if you will, to our FBO staff as well as our department. And uh, I don't think anybody has anything ever negative to say about him. He's great with working with our tenants, our transient customers. He's definitely, whether you know it or not, is helping us in fuel sales too, which is great for our revenue streams. So having him on our team is just really good. Um, it's nothing really I could say more than what you just touched on. And thank you to Doug for writing up that, that great um, nomination because it almost sounds like he's Superman. So uh, we're delighted to have him and I'll, I'll pass the mic over to Nathaniel. Good morning, commissioners. I just want to say thank you to you guys and everybody else for this award. Thank you again to my supervisors and my mom over there for giving me the tools that I need Aww. to succeed. Um, I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunities that I've received since working for the county. And I'm very proud to represent not only the county, but Colorado Air and Spaceport as well. Thank you. So Nathaniel, so Nathaniel 
is more than just the winner of the category. He has also been chosen as the overall winter employee of the season. As such, he is receiving $350 in cultural in action points and a trophy in addition to a certificate of recognition. So congratulations, Nathaniel. Congratulations, everyone. Our employee of the season category winners all receive 5,000 culture and action points and a certificate of recognition. All of our winners, thank you for your service to Adams County. And we'd also like to thank all the employees for joining us today, both in person and those watching from home on, on the live stream on YouTube in support of your colleagues or if you are the colleague being honored yourself. So congratulations at home. Um, so if you have more want more information on how to nominate, please visit My Adams, and you can nominate deserving coworkers and teams moving forward. The Spring Employee and Team of the Season nominations are open now. We would like to do a group photo with all the team and employee winners, so please come down to the front for a photo. To all the employee this season and individual winners today, please meet with your photographer after our group photo out front. So Wendy, I believe you're going to be our master of ceremonies as we come down for for our photos. Let's all go down and take our photos and t love to take a minute to celebrate you. Okay, thank you for joining us in the first round of celebrations. Uh, we do have some more proclamations and celebrations for today. We're going to start with Fair Housing Month. 
It is the 56th anniversary of this landmark civil rights law signed into pres uh, in by President Lyndon B. Johnson. To start, Eva J. Henry. All right, thank you, Chair. Whereas the Fair Housing Act enacted on April 11, 1968, enshrined into federal law the goal of eliminating racial segregation and ending housing discrimination in the United States. And whereas the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination in housing based on race, color, religion, sex, family status, a national origin, and disabilities. And whereas the ongoing struggle for dignity and housing opportunities for all is not the exclusive role providence of the federal government. And whereas vigorous local efforts are taken to remove illegal barriers for her equal opportunities in housing. And whereas Adams County is committed to the mission and the intent of the Fair Housing Act to provide fair and equal housing opportunities for all and to affirmatively further fair housing. Now, therefore, be all resolved that the Board of Commissioners to the County of Adams County, State of Colorado, does hereby proclaim April 2024 as Fair Housing Month and encourages all agencies, institutions, individuals, public and private in Adams County to abide by the letter in the spirit of the Fair Housing Act. Signed by Eva J. Henry, Charles Chas Tedesco, Emma Pinter, Steve Odorizio, and Lynn Baca. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Jenny Hall, Director of Community and Economic Development. I'd just like to say a few words on uh, Fair Housing Month. So on April 11, 1968, just seven days after Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, Congress passed Title VIII of the proposed Civil Rights Act that was known as the Fair Housing Act. It prohibits discrimination, as mentioned, on the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on the conditions of race, religion, national origin, familial status, disability, and sex, including gender identity and sexual orientation. The Fair Housing Act stands as the final great legislative achievement of the civil rights era. Adams County is committed to being an inclusive community of opportunity with a range of housing choices, a diverse resident population, and a variety of lifestyle settings. For some though, living in Adams County is not without trade-offs and challenges. Adams County's 2020 analysis of impediments to fair housing guided us to a fair housing action plan that focuses on what Adams County can reasonably do to address impediments and affirmatively further fair housing through specific actions. Adams County will be updating this work in 2025 and encourages resident involvement because public participation and feedback is critical to understanding our community. As we renew our commitment to fair housing this month, we are pleased to be hosting James Whiteside, the Regional Director of the HUD Region 8 Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity, who will be providing training today in this room, actually, for staff, as well as presenting to the board during study session. So thank you for recognizing the importance of this work in our community. Thank you so much. Um, it, you know, it's really important, these moments, um, when we think about um, fair housing law changing this nation and out, finally outlining outlawing redlining and other systemic changes that allowed for um, the work that we are doing today, but we still have the barriers uh, created by redlining in our communities since it was only outlawed in the late 1960s. So still doing that work. Thank you. Uh, we also have other work to do, including um, flood mitigation. So um, Colorado experienced nearly record-setting rainfall in 2023. In Adams County, we saw 18.9 inches of total rainfall. It had a significant effect on our maintenance programs and left major damage at five sites uh, across the county, and recovery efforts are still underway. That is true. Today, we recognize Stormwater and Floodplain Management Awareness Month, and that proclamation will be read by Lynn Thank you, Chair. So the Storm Water Management and Flood Awareness Month, April of 2024. Whereas Adams County has been a member of the National Flood Insurance Program Community Rating System since 2015. And whereas comprehensive planning for floodplain management is important to enhance life safety for Adams County citizens and to reduce flood damage to property within Adams County. And whereas comprehensive planning for stormwater management is important to protect the quality of stormwater runoff from development within Adams County and to minimize stormwater pollution. 
And whereas Adams County implements stormwater and floodplain management programs through several departments, community and economic development, public works, parks, open space and cultural arts, the sheriff's office and the office of emergency management. It's led by the floodplain administrator with support from the business solutions group of the information technology and innovation department. And whereas the programs are implemented in accordance to federal laws, state laws, and Adams County development standards and regulations. And whereas the programs provide services to the public, including enhanced public safety, reduced damage to property and public infrastructure, stormwater quality, and environmental protection, and opportunities for education about stormwater and flooding. And whereas the activities of the programs have allowed for a 10% discount on flood insurance for property owners within Adams County since 2020. And whereas well-informed people make better decisions and they make take steps to protect themselves from flooding by retrofitting their homes, buying flood insurance and planning the actions they will take during the next flood. And whereas Adams County <clears throat> is a storm ready certified community recognized by the National Weather Service Program to have reached a high level of service weather pre preparedness since 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the County of Adams, State of Colorado, proclaims the month of April 2024 as Stormwater Management and Flood Awareness Month, signed by all the commissioners, Eva J. Henry, Charles Chastadesco, Emma Pinter, Steve Odoricio, and myself. Thank you for that. And we also have the County's Flood Plain Administrator, Steve Krofchek is here uh, and you have comments i understand yes um yeah good morning commissioners yeah i'm steve Kropchik. i'm the county floodplain manager yeah, in honor of the stormwater and floodplain management awareness month we wanted to let you know about our program it's supported by community and economic development public works emergency management as well as the mile high flood district as part of the national flood insurance program the community rating system is a voluntary program which recognizing encouraging flood manage encouraging higher flood plan plain management activities that exceed the minimum nfip requirements under the uh, crs the floodplain insurance rates are discounted in reward to the community acting on three goals, reducing flood damage to insurable structures, strengthening and support of insurance aspect of the NFIP, and encouraging a comprehensive approach to floodplain management. As you stated, uh, Adams County is a class eight community, which gives us a 10% discount to residents. The program promotes flood resiliency and relies on uh, the provisions of more and better information to mitigate risk due to flooding. Our residents uh, enjoy more affordable insurance rates and Adams County is high, held to a higher standard of floodplain management. We are one of 1500 communities through the United States to participate in this program. And we're looking forward to moving to a class seven community in the future to provide an even greater benefit. And that concludes my presentation. So, and also uh, Juliana Archuleta is here for Stormwater if you have any questions, so. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, our last proclamation uh, is Earth Day and after which we'll take photos for all the proclamations. Earth Day is next Monday, April 22nd, and it's a great opportunity to raise awareness and support for environmental protection. Steve Odoricio, I believe you have the proclamation. I do. I do, thank you. This is proclamation for Earth Day, April 22nd, 2024. Whereas this year marks the 54th anniversary of the Earth Day movement with a theme of planet versus plastics. And it is celebrated in 193 countries. Whereas the global community faces challenges such as health issues, food and water shortages, and economic struggles. And whereas all people, regardless of race, gender, income, or geography, have a right to a healthy, sustainable environment with economic growth and opportunity. Whereas we are all caretakers of our planet 
and have an obligation to combat climate change and environmental degradation to preserve the Earth's beauty and resources. Whereas Adams County's Green Team is a group of county employees from multiple departments who share the passion for protecting the environment, and they are engaged in advancing sustainability within the organization. And whereas the Adams County Board of Commissioners approved the Sustainable Adams County 2030 plan on April 21st, 2015, and approved the updates to the plan on December 7th, 2021. And as part of that ongoing effort to continually identify and adopt sustainable practices, initiatives, and policies that save tax dollars, support prosperous businesses, protect the health of our employees and residents, and assure clean land, air, and water. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Adams, State of Colorado, proclaims April 22nd, 2024 as Earth Day and encourages all businesses, institutions, individuals to celebrate the Earth and to commit to caring for the planet and its resources, signed by all five county commissioners. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I understand um, that Juliana Archuleta is here to comment on Earth Day. I love their great shirts. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Thank you for celebrating Earth Day in advance. Earth Day is next week. Uh, I'm here representing um, the Sto uh, Juliana Archuleta, Stormwater uh, Coordinator in Public Works. But we are wearing several hats today. I'm also part of the 2030 Sustainability Plan with Adams County. Uh, mostly my passion and my heart is in the Green Team, and we have been leading the Green Team. It's a group of about 30 employees that volunteer and work together in several projects. And I would like to highlight some of those projects. Sometimes we're not as visible. That's why I turned it on today. <laughs> um, we have done, uh, we had installed a unique compost machine uh, here at uh, Community Economic Development Department. It's a one of a kind machine where you dump food waste that you is expire or, or no longer good. And you can in 24 hours take it and apply brand clean dirt uh, with a fertilizer component to the soil. So that is a one of a kind um, test funded by the Innovation Fund. And I think we're very proud that has been working for about four years. There was another project that Michaela has been participating on the Beehive. Do you want to tell them what that is? Yeah, um, Michaela Stormwater Inspector here at Adams County, part of the green team. Um, the other thing we implemented is our beehive that is located at the animal shelter. So we've hosted two classes, one for our spray group, which was a youth group educating that anyone can have a beehive if you want to be a part of that community. And then we did one for our green team. So um, it's our start to hopefully we get one at every building. Um, but our hope is to just educate the community on um, how much bees affect our environment. And we want to encourage everyone uh, to do your part. Uh, you have the month of April to go ahead and go, walk outside, pick up a piece of trash, turn off a line, save some water, and help the environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So before you uh, head off, Michaela and Juliana, we are supposed to come down to photos for all of the proclamations. So we'll come down and join you and then let our uh, mistress of ceremonies walk us through the various photos.
All right. So hello, everyone. Thank you for all the, the celebrating. That was a lot of different types of celebrating. We do have a public hearing to do as well. And um, get our agenda up. Do we have any citizen communication this morning? Chair, we do have one person signed up for today's land Great. use case. And just for clarity, it's for general public comment as opposed to land use? Yes. Okay, come on down, introduce yourself and your ad and give your name and your address. Oh, and you'll I have apologize. three minutes. It's for land use today. The comment oh, is it for is for land use. use. I'm so sorry, I didn't hear you. I apologize. We'll get to land use in just a minute. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone here for general public comment, not for the land use item? Any citizens at all? Sir? Yeah. Come on, come on down. Introduce yourself, name and address, and you get three minutes. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for your help and everything. Uh, I went down the dog pound the other day to get my dog, and I have a concern about child abuse and uh, women's places being violated, and they have this LGBTQ crosswalk, mm -hmm. and... You know, 10 years ago, I didn't know anything about them, but now they have a history of child molestation where they're, they're mutilating kids. There's uh, Abigail Shriver has a book on irreversible damage. Uh, then you have women's spaces where they have sports and stuff that is being attacked, where they're, they're, they're attacking women's safe places. And I understand that the government wants to be inclusive, but uh, you were talking about uh, uh, fair housing rights for people, race, religion, you know, and sex. They attack all three. You know, they're attacking the sex of women. They're attacking children. And they are attacking religious uh, people uh, in the sense of, like, in Easter, they had... Uh, assaulted that day and then they have parades where they uh, mock Christianity and they mock other religions and I think it's, it's, it's as offensive as if it, you guys put a swastika on the ground and that's my tax money so I like to know what can be done about it you know this isn't a back and forth. You have your three minutes, sir. You have okay. one minute left. Uh, that's about it. I mean, I, I came on the spur of the moment. I'll be here more often. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm a busy man, but it's the value of seeing children's lives and women's rights being protected and that of religious rights. These are important, and sometimes you've got to give up your time and effort, and I will, you know, but... Uh, if any of you ever want to sit down and have a coffee and talk about it, I'm a libertarian. I believe in freedoms of people to live their own lives, but not when they're violating other people's, like children and women and other, you know, it, it's wrong. It's wrong to do it, you know. And the Fair Housing Act is about that, you know. Uh, it's a shame to see that going on in our country. You know, like I say, it's like seeing a swastika on the ground and my tax money paying for it. So I, I truly do understand. That's your time, sir. Okay. You, I'll see you next week. Are there any other citizens who have comment? Okay, elected official comment. Okay, for every um, gay resident of Adams County, employee, trans employee of this county and of Adams County, I want you to know that your rights are important. Your life is important. You are valued. We all care. We have worked diligently as a board unanimously to support LGBTQ inclusion in this county for our employees, for your health insurance, for your safety, and we know that you deserve to be safe in all the spaces you work, in all government spaces, and you deserve to be welcome in all the spaces you exist in, in all public spaces. So thank you.
for every queer American who has ever taken the time to put their life on the line to fight for the rights of others and to make our spaces, our public spaces, more inclusive. We have a consent calendar as well. Does anyone have a motion on the consent calendar? So moved. Second. Erica, I'm so sorry, my iPad has a technical issue. Can we do a roll call vote? Yep. Commissioner Baca? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Pinter? Yes. And then for new business, I believe it goes to our county manager. Good morning, commissioners. I can speak today. Great. Uh, we have two items for you. The first one is a resolution approving Amendment 1 between Adams County and M.W. Golden Constructors Incorporated in the amount of $1,578,038 for construction manager, general contractor services for the government center space utilization phase four project amendment 2024.610. Kyle Berg with facilities is presenting. Good morning, commissioners. Kyle Berg, project manager with facilities and fleet management. The government center space utilization phase four project will renovate the facilities and fleet suite on the second floor to improve space efficiency and allow for future growth of our department. The reception desk area in the main lobby will also be renovated to be more forward facing and welcoming to visitors. In June 2023, a formal request for proposal was sent to the 13 firms who are pre-qualified for construction manager, general contractor services, and three responses were received. After evaluation by committee, it was determined that M.W. Golden had met all criteria set forth in the RFP and would be the best, best value to the county. On September 19, 2023, the Board of County Commissioners approved an agreement with M.W. Golden for pre-construction services on the phase four project. Since then, the design has been completed, a permit issued, and the guaranteed maximum price for construction was finalized. Therefore, it is recommended to approve amendment one to the agreement with MW Golden to include construction services at the guaranteed maximum price of $1,578,038 for the government center space utilization phase four, phase four project. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? Uh, any questions, colleagues? Seeing no questions, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve as presented. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our second item is a resolution approving prevailing wage for public projects policy. I uh, just want to make a note that Alicia was going to present this initially. She's out uh, on a family emergency, but Heidi will cover. And we also have some staff support as needed. Good morning, commissioners. Um, as the board is aware, this was a project that the board asked us to start working on um, late last year. And we are proud to bring forward the policy for prevailing wage for public projects. Um, this policy adopts a requirement of pay of prevailing wage, as well as a weekly certification of wages paid on all contracts for construction projects and road projects in Adams County valued at $250,000 or more. Uh, the intent is that the project will begin se September 1st. We will start notifying applicants for RFP and uh, at this point so that they know any contract entered into September 1 or after this, pro this policy will apply to. Um, and in the meantime, we'll begin training staff and our contractors on the new policy, um, implementing software that will be used to collect wage data um, and to make sure that we're ready to roll um, come September. Um, I think that, you know, this, we tried to be as consistent as we could um, with the state statutes for prevailing wage, just to make it easier on everyone. We're planning to use the software utilized by both the state and the federal government for wage projects. Um, so we hope that we're able to implement this in a way that ensures uh, workers on our projects are paid fairly and accurately um, and also, you know, make it um, feasible for our contractors to meet these requirements. So happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, 
complete copy of the policy is attached uh, to the resolution. Um, there was also a significant stakeholder process um, in developing this policy. We had multiple in-person meetings, um, large participation by labor, some participation by our contractors that regularly do business with Adams County, and then general public as well. They, um, those stakeholder meetings were incredibly helpful to staff in developing a policy that really can work for everyone. Um, and then of course we have shared drafts along the way and received feedback from those stakeholders as well. Thank you. Um, colleagues, um, I see a few hands up for comment. I saw Commissioner Tedesco first and then we'll go down the line. Yeah, I just needed a clarification before I made a comment, but um, I guess it was my understanding that this was going to be implemented today and that any construction work that happens after uh, to, after September, it would apply to, but RFPs put in from today through September would still apply because of that gap in, um, you know, whether they could do the construction before September. Yeah, so um, in order to have some definitive date, so it's clear to everyone when this policy goes into effect, we pick September 1st and any contract entered into on that date or after would have this requirement. We also put in the policy that solicitations for RFP or IFB that fall within the scope of this policy will include notification of the adoption of this policy and its application to contracts entered into after September 1. So if we were to start a process today and the intent would be that the contract wouldn't be signed until September 1, those parties would all be on notice that this policy will go into effect at that time. But if something were to be signed between today and September 1st, it would not apply. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I appreciate that. Okay, I believe I saw Commissioner uh, Odorisio and then we'll see if anyone else has a question or a comment. I, uh, I, I just want to say that this is a uh, this is one of many opportunities um, or efforts over the years um, that this board has put together to show a support of uh, working folks in the community. I'm proud to support this today. I'm proud to support best value contracting and other other policies that were implemented before I got here. Thank you, Chaz and Eva, um, and to expand those policies. And now we're taking the, these uh, next steps to show our support for folks in our community. Um, thank you all very much. Thank you, Chaz, for your efforts on this. Thank you, Eva, for your efforts. Uh, Emma and uh, Lynn Baca, you guys have uh, been outstanding advocates also for the folks in our community. And um, you won't find a county in Colorado that stands up for working folks more than the folks on this board. And I'm proud to work with all of them. Thank you. All right, I'm um, just looking to see if there's any, um, Lynn, I don't see, okay, you do have, go ahead. Yeah, I just have a Mr. comment. Baca. So I want to, you know, thank the staff and we did a tremendous amount of stakeholding on this and we had a lot of participation. So I want to thank all those that were involved. Um, and I want to thank, you know, same thing. I don't want to be redundant, but uh, Commissioner Henry and Tedesco did a lot of work on best value contracting uh, when they came on as county commissioners 11 years ago, almost 12 years ago. And I want to thank um, Commissioner Tedesco for bringing this forward. So this is, you know, we started this process of let's start the process. Um, we know that there's work to be done um, on the process or on the policy itself, but I think that we have a good starting point today and happy to support this. So thank you, Chair. Commissioner Henry, and then we'll circle back. I always hate talking after Commissioner Tedesco because he's so good. Well, he gets his second, he'll get his second by the yeah, he'll after get his you. thing going, yeah. and I'd be like, don't know what to say after that. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank this team and our employees uh, for going uh, for this this project or this this policy. I really appreciate it. Um, I come from a blue collar family, hardworking people. And I believe that everyone that works on a project in Adams County should be paid fairly. I believe that they should have benefits. And I believe that they should be able to take home a paycheck that they can be proud of to be able to raise their families. So in our policies that we vote on, especially the one today, will actually reflect that. So I want to thank our team, uh, and group of employees, and our commissioners for actually showing what our values are in Adams County. And I'll just say... We're a whole lot worker friendly than Denver, just saying. 
it's not always about Denver. We are awesome in our own right. Um, I'll make a okay, comment. Boulder. <laughs> We are awesome in our own right. Um, I'll make a comment and then I'll let Commissioner Tedesco bring us home and then make the motion. Um, thank you to my colleagues for working so diligently on this. This is something that we all have cared about for a long time, but it was Commissioner Tedesco that told us that now is the moment and now is the moment we should move. And so I want to thank him for that and, and naming that this is the year that we needed to move. And I want to thank staff who worked so diligently across a robust stakeholder process to get feedback, to get insights, and to make sure that we're implementing something um, that um, had the most input possible. So with that, I'm thrilled that we are voting on this today and I'll hand it over um, to the gentleman who said today is the day that we pass this policy, Commissioner Tedesco. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, you know, for for insight on this, you know, ever since I came on board, I've tried to work towards a prevailing wage, best value. Uh, when we came in, we actually were successful in using best value. Um, best value contracting allowed us to build and rebuild almost all of our major projects in Adams County. And with that type of policy, we've been able to build it with confidence that it'll be built on time, on schedule, and with the, without the fear of these change orders coming in that make the costs go through the roof. Um, I think you see that in the quality and the amount of what projects that we've done through Adams County. And we're very proud of that. Uh, prevailing wage was really uh, put forward and people ask, well, why do you need prevailing wage? People pay a wage and as long as they're paying above minimum wage, what does it matter? Well, because you want people doing these jobs that are qualified to do these jobs, that have the skill set to do these jobs, and you don't want people taken advantage of to do those jobs. Um, I'll just give you a case and example. There's a prevailing wage law in uh, Denver right now. And in the infancy of when they imp implemented that, they were able to recover over $700,000 in, in uh, uh, wage theft in what they were trying to push in through their contracts. Last year, they recovered a little over $2 million in uh, wage theft. That means this this is prevalent throughout the state. When we talk to the NLRB and we ask them, how are you addressing wage theft and how are you addressing it based on the prevailing wage? You know, they tell us, look, we just don't have the capacity. This is so prevalent throughout the state that we have a backlog we can't even address. Um, and they even say, we need local authorities to start passing this and start enforcing because if we can't address these, it's just going to keep on going. And I want to make it perfectly clear, this is not the majority of our contractors that are doing this. These are these contractors that operate for a profit, then claim bankruptcy or dissolve the company and then open up again as another company and do the exact same thing. Meanwhile, there's a trail of family members that have not received their benefits and haven't received their, their paychecks. Why is that important to us in government and why are we passing this? It's because at the end of the day, if we continue to allow this to happen, those people are pushed off onto services that are paid for by tax dollars. And the more we put that burden on our constituents, the more this government is going to have to take from one service to give to another. If we can address this in the beginning and we can ensure that these contractors are all coming in, they're all bidding on the same work, they're all paying the same rate, we will get a fairer, better contract with better work and we'll have reliability and sustainability throughout the county. And we can take those monies that normally would have gone for benefits paid to those that are victimized and put that to other services that could better benefit our community. And with that, if there's any questions on prevailing wage or how this works, um, please reach out. I have no problem talking about this. I wanna commend this board from our chair to the other commissioners on all the work that they've done on this. I wanna say my apologies to the staff because I know that I've been very uh, difficult on this, um, but I do believe that this policy will enhance our community as well as the region and our contractors at the end of the day will be grateful 
just because of the fact that they know they're competing on an even playing field and they're not being undercut uh, by those unscrupulous contractors. So thank you again, board, and thank you everyone for allowing me the time to speak on this. At this time, I'd like to move a motion to approve uh, resolution approving prevailing wage for public pro projects policy. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. It passes unanimously. As I understand it, um, that is all your business this morning, County Manager, County Attorney. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, I would ask that we go into executive session today. Due to some time issues, I am going to postpone the executive session that was on the agenda for today till next week, if that's all right with the board. And then I would ask that we go into executive session to discuss a, a case today that is a timely issue. And that one would be pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 24-6-402-4B and E for the purpose of receiving legal advice and instructing negotiators regarding the Jordan case. Okay. Is there a motion, colleagues? So Second. Okay, that passes unanimously as well. And then next up is our land use hearing. We're going to go ahead and take a 10 minute break because we had a little bit of a morning. I will see you all back at 1045.
Okay, it does appear that we're all here and assembled a little earlier than expected. So staff, are you ready to move forward? Okay, great. And remember, the public is still here for the land use matter. So let's go ahead and reconvene our meeting this morning at 1040. Uh, we'll start with our first land use case, low subdivision and rezone. So staff, take it away. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Cody Spade. I'm a planner with the Community and Economic Development Department. I'm here to present to you uh, the case number PRC 2023-6, the Lull Development Subdivision and Rezone, which is located at 5602, 5660, and 5820 Lowell Boulevard. The request before you today, uh, one being a major subdivision preliminary plat, which would create two lots that totals 23.3 acres. Uh, the second being a zoning map amendment to rezone 12.9 of those 23.3 acres uh, from its current commercial four zoning to residential four zoning. Uh, here's an aerial view of the site. Uh, as you can see, currently it is made up of three parcels located just north of I-76 and just to the east of Lowell Boulevard. Uh, across the street is the Clear Creek Valley Park. Um, and just to the northwest up here is the Clear Creek Federal RTD Station. And um, along the site to the east is Clear Creek and the Clear Creek Trail. And here's a uh, closer aerial view of the site. Um, as you can see, uh, currently, the top portion of the site uh, operates as a garden center. Um, this northern per portion of the site would remain commercial floor. Um, and the southern portion, uh, which is currently vacant uh, and does uh, house a single family home that is uh, slated to be demolished with this uh, development, um, would be the portion of the lots that would be rezoned uh, to R4. Uh, again, the current zoning for the lots are C4, uh, commercial four. Uh, the lot is uh, adjoined to the north by I1 industrial, uh, as well as I2 industrial across uh, Clear Creek to the east and um, the park to the west. The future land use for these parcels are mixed use, uh, which is uh, supportive of, of this development request today. Um, again, parks uh, to the west and mixed use uh, as well surrounding the site. Um, and when reviewing a major subdivision preliminary plat, the criteria that shall be considered is, is consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with the development standards, conformance with the subdivided sub division design standards, uh, sufficient water supply and sewage disposal, and that no soil or topographical conditions presenting hazards or requiring special precautions and adequate drainage improvements. Should also be noted that the applicant has worked closely with FEMA to obtain a clomer for this site, um, as well as um, the criteria that shall be considered is conforming with the zone district density allowances and compatible with the surrounding area. And when looking at a rezoning, the criteria that shall be considered is consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with the development standards, and complies to the development standards, is harmonious and compatible to the surrounding area. And this is the conceptual site plan that the applicant has provided. Um, it's important to note that uh, at this time, this is just uh, a concept of what the site may look like um, at the final development. Um, but this uh, current site plan does contemplate 28 dwelling units per acre, which does meet the minimum and maximum uh, requirement for dwelling units per acre in the residential four zone district. And here is the preliminary plat that the applicant has submitted. And in addition to that uh, dwelling units per acre uh, requirement, there are some additional R4 zone district dimensional standards including a minimum lot size of two acres. Uh, the proposed lot would be 12.9 acres uh, in a minimum lot width of 200 feet in which the proposed uh, lot width for the site would be 
573 feet. And here are some site photos uh, showing the site conditions along Lowell Boulevard. Uh, the photo on the left looking north along Lowell and the photo on the right looking south. And additionally, a photo uh, looking from Lowell Boulevard to the east at the vacant portion of the site. During the referral period uh, for this case, we did notify property owners and occupants within 1,000 feet for a total of 103 notices sent. Uh, we did receive one uh, public comment that uh, raised concerns over stormwater, drainage, and traffic. Uh, we also notified uh, referral agencies uh, during this referral period as well, and the following referral agencies did respond without comment, or without concern, I should say. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, heard this case on March 28th, 2024, uh, and the, they voted 7-0 to move this application forward to the Board of County Commissioners with the recommendation of approval of the rezoning and preliminary plat uh, case number PRC 2023-6 with 13 findings of fact and one note. The recommended findings of fact are as follows. And the one note to the applicant being that the applicant shall comply with all building, zoning, fire, engineering, and health code and regulations during the development of the subject site. And that concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see that we have some questions for staff. So we'll start with you, Commissioner. Oh, I thought you were, yes, Commissioner Tedesco. Oh, I, I, look, I like this project. I think that uh, anytime we can put some more infill in for housing and, and put some density behind it, I like the project. Um, my only concern, though, is that having been here a little over a decade now, I'm very familiar with this property. Um, I just need to know how you overcame the issue with the mining and whether or not that is or has been addressed. I didn't see it mentioned in any of the paperwork, and I didn't see it um, mentioned as a there's mineral rights associated with this property. And one of the things that we ran into early on in my um, tenure as a commissioner is that there's mining or mineral right that we need to address before anything can happen on this property. And the second part of that question is um, there was also some moving of material into the area uh, that I understood was not approved. And how are we addressing that issue. Good morning, Commissioner Jen Vetter, Planning and Development Manager. Um, I'll take a first stab and then I might hand it over to Megan Grant our, um, from our environmental team. Um, so there, um, there was an old uh, mine on this property. Um, the uh, division of uh, sorry, the USGS uh, Geological Survey provided an analysis um, and stated that the property is not sufficient for uh, gravel mining, but maybe may have sand resources, although it's such a small property that it may not be economically feasible um, to be able to extract those resources. Um, it does sound like there may have been an old mine to the south um, underneath the existing 76 highway. Um, and there may have been imported material, as you said, um, that may have not been permitted. Um, we don't have a lot of information on that. It was done back in the 1950s, as far as we can tell. Um, so there would be need, there would need to be um, a soils analysis prior to building permit. Um, and we, we were planning on adding that as a condition on the final plat. I appreciate that, and I appreciate that overview. Um, it's a little different than I heard 10 years ago. Um, there was a lot more concern about this back then. So I'm glad that there's not that same concern now. I'm glad that there was some research done and some paperwork done. Uh, I guess my concern is, the only concern I have is, is how do you deal with those that own the mineral rights? Um, and has that been dealt with prior to approving any development on this um, so that we don't create an issue that we don't need to create? Probably more of a legal question. <laughs> 
sorry, I'm a little far from the mic today. Um, Christy Fitch with the county attorney's office. Um, so at the time of final plat, the um, applicant is supposed to provide notice to all mineral owners um, and that um, tells them that they're planning on this development. So at that time, a mineral owner can bring up their um, objections to the application. Um, I would also ask the development um, the developers if they have any information on exactly who owns them or if it's been severed because um, it could be likely that they own both the mineral rights and the surface rights and, and i appreciate that because i just want to make sure we're not we're not doing something that could negatively impact either the landowner or the developers uh, moving forward and create a scenario where you know we have to go back through this again so um, it's just from past recollection of dealing with this property, and I'm very, very happy that we're moving forward with this. I just want to make sure all our ducks are in a row before we make that vote. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, just checking to see if there's any other questions for staff. Okay. Uh, does the applicant have a presentation this morning? Come on down. Introduce yourselves and get into your presentation. Hi there. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Josh McCarn, the uh, landscape architect and planner for the uh, development team. Um, just to introduce our team real quick. Um, we have the uh, owner's representatives, uh, Marco Makovic and Craig Bryan, with us today. Um, the uh, architects, uh, Sam Rogers, is here representing them, and TJ Heipel, uh, the uh, civil engineer for the project. Uh, we also have uh, Sean Keller, who is the uh, traffic engineer who worked on this uh, for us, and Daniel Lowen of Daniel Lowen Engineering um, handled the uh, Clomar presentation and Eckhart uh, surveying handled the uh, surveying and plat work for us. Okay, and we'll just briefly review uh, um, the information that uh, Cody provided for us. Um, you can see our site here outlined in orange uh, across the street, uh, Clear Creek Valley Park with uh, Regis University, um, a little over a mile to the south. And the uh, Clear Creek uh, Federal Station is about uh, one point one mile uh, walk along the uh, Clear Creek Trail from this property. Next slide, please. Hey, and uh, here today uh, seeking your support in uh, rezoning and subdividing this property. Um, as Cody mentioned, the existing zone uh, for this property is uh, commercial uh, four, C4 district, and we're looking to rezone that uh, for the R4 residential four district. Um, that uh, does align with the uh, Adams County comprehensive plan. Um, if you go to the next slide, we can uh, see here, uh, you can see the uh, uh, heavy uh, dark line, which is uh, Interstate 76. Um, our project, the uh, 5602 there highlighted in orange uh, falls in the uh, urban residential uh, future land use, and that is uh, right along uh, uh, what we're proposing there. Okay, and then uh, for the uh, uh, major subdivision, um, we have the, uh, the three lots. Um, They're gonna be combined into two lots. The final lot uh, that is being proposed uh, for development is uh, lot one. Um, in the uh, southern portion of the plat there. Uh, lot one will be uh, um, roughly 12.85 acres. And this is, uh, uh, well, we're not here to uh, um, review the uh, site design. Um, we included this so y'all can get an idea of uh, what uh, could potentially be proposed on this. Um, right now we're looking uh, at uh, and apartment uh, buildings in this area. And this is just a uh, conceptual idea of the uh, 
potential uh, architectural character. Um, in the uh, top left, that would be the uh, uh, male and uh, the male room there, the uh, larger one. Um, and the bottom left would be the clubhouse. And then there's uh, elevations of the uh, potential design for the uh, front and rear of the apartments and then uh, the garage uh, structures as well. Okay, thank you. That uh, concludes uh, our applicant presentation. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Oh, yes, we have one question, sir. Well, I mean, if I need to re-ask the question and you're not going to address it, I could re-ask the questions. For the, about uh, the mining mineral rights and earth on the property. Right. Well, uh, um, as was stated, we'll be... You have a lifeline. Yeah, so yeah. a friend is okay. coming down. <laughs> right. Okay, we'll have uh, Marco uh, handle that one. Thanks, Marco. Uh, Marco McAvick, the owner and developer. So uh, when we talked to your commissioner about two years ago about this issue, we reached out, we had an attorney to go and find a mineral rights owner uh, with Anthony Spano's help, we found out it was the railroad. We could not find anybody that wanted to speak with us or we have sent emails, uh, tried to communicate to find anybody who owns the mineral rights for this. We only got crickets um, and you know, we're fine continuing to, you know, trying to find who owns these. But for right now, there is nobody that has stepped out uh, and got back to us on it at all. I apologize, but what about the earth that was moved on to there? So the earth that was moved on to there, there's a permit in 2007 and 2008, the previous developer to move that soil that there came from the T-Rex project. And we are intending to use that there to regrade the project. And But there's a permit and um, uh, Greg Labrie, like two years ago, he found the entire file with all the CLOMA documents, the permits for bringing the soil. So there's, there's definitely a permit a permit for the soil that was brought in. So that'll be taken care of through our permitting process and testing, correct? Yes. Okay. The only question I have, and thank you for your answers, yeah. that makes me yeah. a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it doesn't resolve my issue with the mineral, uh, I would ask legally, does that cover anything that we do moving forward, the steps that they've already taken. My, and understand, my concern here is that without a mineral owner identified, if that mineral owner is the railroad and they step up later and come after, what recourse do we have or what subject would we have to apply to? So as far as the county's... Um legal issues here. The only thing the county is required to do is per have the applicant provide notice that this is happening to the mineral owner. So as far as any legal recourse for the county, there weren't, wouldn't be any, um, as long as we have that form from the developer that they've provided that notice. Now, if the developer doesn't provide that notice and has given us like a fraudulent form, for example, that would be an, an issue that the developer and that mineral owner need to work out between themselves. So can I follow up on that? Is there a requirement that they have to find the owner first or how, did, how does that work if they can't find the owner? Because that's the issue. Yeah, so it has to be an owner that is in the county's tax access or tax records or has filed notice of the office and the clerk and recorder that they have those rights. So if no one's filed notice that they have those rights, it's going to be very difficult for them to find that information. And obviously, um, they would have taken the property without notice that a mineral owner has that. Um, yeah. has I think this rights. is what held us back the first time is yeah. that there was this uncertainty and inability to find who the actual person was. Right. Knowing that it was there. So, uh, look, I am I want to approve today. I'm just a little bit of a, a struggle with the legalities of it and if our attorneys are confident that we're in a good place with it and I, if i can get them to say that then i'm in a great place with this yeah i just wanted to be able to address it publicly because this has been an issue before and i want to make sure we're, we're moving in the right direction 
Yeah, and then when you brought that up two years ago, I mean, we spent a lot of money in attorney fees trying to figure this out. And I would take the county's help if they can help us locate who the actual owner is yeah. and how to contact them. We'll send in notices we need to. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I don't know that it's the county's obligation to help you find an owner. Um, Commissioner Henry? Being a mineral owner myself, only in North Dakota. I know North Dakota, and this is to our attorneys in North Dakota, there's actually a law that we have to file every 15 to 20 years to keep our mineral rights, which makes it really hard because ours has been over 100 years. Um, <laughs> nothing's ever happened. It's not that that's why I'm working. But uh, <laughs> maybe, I mean, does Colorado have a law like that that's similar? And maybe these, they have not registered their, I know you. <laughs> Maybe they've registered. <laughs> Commissioners, I'm Anthony Spano at 57.8 Low Boulevard. I think I need to shed light on this. When, way back in history, when the railroad was built, the government granted uh, mineral rights along the path in order to make it profitable, profitable for the railroads. That's why the railroad still technically owns the mineral rights. Nobody else has challenged it. So if by now they haven't, <laughs> touched it i don't think they'll ever will i i understand and i hear where you're coming from i just wanted to be able to broach well, the subject here because you know ignorance it, it, is bliss but you know well it went from the rio grand denver rio grand uh the southern pacific and now it's the union pacific so it's even maybe convoluted in their chain of command so so in, in nowhere in my questioning was i well, I, I know to, that, but that's that's the history I, of. I'm I'm not alluding to you know the county needs to do anything or help with anything. Um, I'm not alluding to you know you have to do anything more. Um, I asked you what you have done. What I'm asking for from the county is legally, are we okay moving forward on this from our end? And that's what I'm asking. Commissioner Tedesco, if I might ask, um, if we could take a brief re recess to have an executive session on this topic, and I would ask our county attorney to give us language, just so that we're clear, um, mineral rights are a weird topic, and I, I, I hear understand. you, and you're the one taking the risk. If 20 years down the road someone changes their mind, it's your oh, buildings. Yes. So I'd love to have the attorney give us an opinion. Uh, pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 246-4024B for the purpose of receiving legal advice. Okay. I will make that motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Great. Let's um, do a roll call vote. Commissioner Pinter? Yes. Commissioner Baca? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Okay, let's just, we'll recess back here. We'll get the attorneys to tell us what we're looking at, and we'll be back.
just checking that staff is sorted. Okay, so we're gonna reconvene on our land use hearing. Uh, what time is it? Whatever time it is, 11.48. Um, thank you for allowing us to uh, have a minute to confer with our attorneys. And I know that the applicant um, has also um, had a chance to talk with staff. Um, we do have a statement from staff and we are going, we are, this, uh, the commissioners are expecting a continuance at this time. So um, Ms. Fitch, uh, yes. Um, I, do you, what would you like to make your statement and then we'll hear from the public or how would you like to go Ms. Fitch? Um, I think either way works for you. I can make the statement so the member of the public knows why we're continuing it. That's That makes sense to me. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and make that statement and then we'll hold uh, until we hear public comment um, and have a motion from the board. Awesome. Um, pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 2465.5103, a developer is required to provide notice of a public hearing to all mineral owners. Um, that notice shall contain the time in place of the public hearing as well as the nature of the public hearing. The notice in this case was noticed in 2022, so did not contain the time and time place of the initial public hearing and will need to be re-noticed. Um, in the alternative, the uh, property owner will have to certify that they could not find any mineral estate owners if that is the case. Um, so given that the county attorney's office recommends that this be continue to the June 4th public hearing, which will give the property owner a little bit more than 45 days to meet that notice requirement. Okay, thank you, Ms. Fitch. Um, are there any questions from my colleagues for staff or the applicants before we take public comment? No questions, comments, okay. Clerk Hanna, do we have any members of the public signed up? We do have one person, Dennis Arbogast. Okay, come on down, sir. Introduce yourself, name and address, and you'll have three minutes. And thank you for your patience this morning. Well, thank you for um, for your interest in this case, and I appreciate the opportunity to to uh, talk about it some more. Um, my, uh, I'm Dennis Arbogast. I live in Lakewood at 63 South Balsam Street. I have a lot of familiarity with this area. Um, over 20 years of uh, experience uh, where I've uh, been a member of the uh, fishing club that is directly north of this proposed project at Lake Carroll Ann. And I'm here on behalf of those owners, uh, Carol and Eddie Bone. And uh, I'm also a uh, recently retired um, civil engineer with over 35 years of experience in water resources and land development. And I've been aware of, of a lot of these issues and I, I really appreciate the commissioner's uh, interest in, in bringing up the, the uh, somewhat historic issues of uh, the fill material that was placed on the east side uh, of Lowell, which um, uh, is a concern or has been a concern uh, the conditions of that permit uh, allowed the fill, but required it be mitigated by the construction of a large storm drainage channel that is in the uh, master drainage plan for this area and uh, was a template for going forward and dealing with the flood flows that get trapped north of I-76. So that was in that permit, the fill material was placed, but the channel was never constructed. So uh, it'd be my interpretation that, that that fill material shouldn't be allowed to remain uh, because the mitigation wasn't taken care of as, as uh, the permit required. So that that's my take on that fill material, and it's, it's been an area of concern for the bones who, uh, because this is a floodway, and the floodway is kind of a sacred conveyance area for flood flows. If you pinch it down, it has to raise the water, and that adversely affects adjacent properties, which is their primary concern. So, um, so, so that's that part. The, the other part about uh, the uh, mineral rights, um, 
I, I'll get throw out one more interpretation of this because uh, I believe that the uh, the state statute is CRS thirty four dash one dash three hundred one, and uh, which the state looked at the alluvial deposits that occur along streams and and declared that as a mineral resource for everyone, for all citizens of the state. This is, a, you know, the most economical place to mine gravel. So recognizing that, they developed a state statute which said that all counties should comply by identifying where these areas exist. <laughs> Sir, and, that, that is your three minutes, and you're right. Thank I'm, you. I'm sorry? Thank you. That is your three minutes, and you're, you're right. You named the correct statute. Uh, so thank I, you for your time. I have uh, my comments are in the packet that yes. you have near the end. Thank you. That is your time. And they're complete. Yep. And they they have not been addressed. I'm concerned about this project right. going forward until there's more coordination yep. and floodplain issues. Thank you. That is your well. time. Thank you. All right. Um, members of the public are only given three minutes. Thank you for that. You mentioned that, um, sir, you mentioned that you have submitted written comments. You are welcome to email again and submit new comments. And we do have an obligation as the board to read uh, the materials in the packet. Given what we've heard um, from staff and the applicant and the public, um, do any of my colleagues have any additional questions or comments before we make a motion? Mr. Tedesco. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I appreciate you recognize me. Thank you. I just want to make sure that I'm clear as to what what the questions were that I was asking. Um, because this has had such a history behind it with multiple parties, um, I wanted to make sure that the county was confident in their position moving forward. Um, because of that, we saw the paperwork. I don't believe that we need any other clarification. Uh, and I think that the county and the staff have done an outstanding job of clarifying a lot of this that you know I had a concern of with the fill and with the minerals and all of that. I think that right now, moving forward, the clarification of the issues at hand were overseen by the county and need to be, you know, addressed. And once we get that done, I think that we're in a good place. Uh, I just want to make sure that the county is not overlooking something that we should have done or could have done in this issue. And I apologize if there is a inconvenience of timeline, um, but please understand we're trying to protect ourselves as a county, as well as whatever the development is. Um, I, I wanna also express that we are trying to protect the county as far as any issues going forward. And I think we'll have the opportunity to, to deal with that as this development comes forward for other approvals. And I just want to reassure that this is about protecting our county and our constituents and those residents that lie and the people who are going to come in and utilize this. Um, so this is not one sided or the other. This is absolutely about protecting the county and our due diligence and what, what, how we decide that. Um, I just want to appreciate everybody that came and spoke and presented, but I also want to tell the staff, I know that this is putting an extra burden on you and I apologize, um, but we do appreciate your work on this. Thank you, sir. I believe Commissioner um, Odoricio has a comment as well. I, uh, I will say that um, I can understand and I appreciate Commissioner Tedesco's concerns given the, the, the history of the uh, neighborhood disputes here. I, um, I will like put everyone on notice. I plan on uh, not letting us get into the pissing contest between the neighbors, but focusing on what's best for the county. And so I understand that. And I feel bad for the applicant today that has come and thought they had all of their stuff together. And because of these issues, we have to push it back a little while. But I can tell you now, um, I believe Commissioner Chesk, I stand with him that uh, I, that we're trying to make sure that this um, lengthy dispute doesn't become something that the county and county taxpayers have to spend extra money on in the future between what we really need, which is housing and new development along that corridor and a uh, fishing club next door. I'm not even sure if that's zoned for fishing club or whatever that is, that'll be some other issue. But um, 
I, I look forward to having us come back. And I just want everyone to know that this is, I, I agree with Commissioner Tedesco, this is not us stepping in the middle of the dispute, but focusing on um, to make sure that the county's uh, I's are dotted and T's are crossed. So uh, thank you, Commissioner Tedesco. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who has a question or comment concern? Okay, just one comment from myself. Um, thank you uh, for coming and raising your concerns um, about stormwater and drainage. That will, those matters are addressed in the packet and will continue to be addressed as they start, assuming they eventually get an approval um, and moving dirt and as part of the engineering process. But it's helpful to have them documented from neighbors. Neighbors often have the best insight on stormwater concerns. So feel free to email us again. And when we have the date certain uh, announced, which I believe is June 4th, unless I hear separately from our attorneys, you're welcome to come back June 4th as well. Uh, but know that we took your comments seriously. Do um, we have a motion to continue to June 4th? Madam Chair, I move that we uh, continue this uh, land use application to June 4th. Okay. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. This passes unanimously. Applicants, good luck. Thank you for getting your notice ducks in a row to make sure it's clear. And we'll see you again in June. I believe that concludes our meeting, unless there's anything else from County Attorney, County Manager. Okay, then we'll adjourn our meeting and we'll see everyone upstairs for study session.